Well, I want to just kind of take you inside. Yes, you know, normally we're done at 11, 59, 55, and we, yeah. we go right to the noon game. But yesterday, as we got in the car to go to the airport so I could catch a flight, so I could get home in time to watch the kick for the Tennessee-Alabama game, <laughs> uh, I complained to our producers that we had to go to 12.03 because there wasn't an SEC game and we have a, had a command. So I was pretty ticked off that we had to work to 12.03 p.m. You know what? You better get overtime pay for that. And not only that, if I'm not mistaken, Tebow's got a private jet. Jordan well, here, Rogers has a private yeah, jet. Here's the funny thing uh, inside baseball. So the rest of us schlubs are trying to get from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham to catch a flight uh, that's very narrow. You, you've done this before. And, you know, we we have to go through T. So we, we are working our way through game traffic while the – while Tebow and Rogers have a private uh, ha have a police escort to the private airport, Rogers' game starts at seven thirty. Tebow's I don't know what his games when his game starts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the SEC people, you guys are in more advertisements. I see, I see Marty's face everywhere. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh... You know, it's, it's, you got to come on down south, Matt, and, you know, try to make a few bucks. You guys are like the. Well, the SEC does own college football, doesn't it? <laughs> that's true. Or, or it did. I can't remember when that was. It's it's true. So, well, that's a good place to jump off because I love everyone you guys work with. It's a fun show, even though half of you have private jets and I'm schlubbing it till 3 a.m. At the, the, in beautiful Bristol, America. But having said that, we love our jobs because it's college football and I said it on, on Sunday, Bloody Sunday, where I was like, you know what? I, I really want to get into Alabama and Tennessee because Alabama just – it's Alabama. They were down 13 at the half. They outscored Tennessee 27 nothing in the second half. They put their front foot on Tennessee's throat. They ended up covering, and that's just who Alabama is this year. It is. And, and, and when, when Saban came by our show uh, early in the morning, Matt, uh, he, he talked about – you know the, the craziness of this team and uh but but he seems to really have been challenged by it and and i think once we move past the second or third game of the season nick saban uh ha, has taught a master class and why he's the best coach of all time and why i think this is one of the most incredible seasons uh, of his coaching career and you know right now there are not many more obstacles until atlanta and then it's a winner it's a go you know go for broke against Georgia and see if you can get back to the playoffs and you know I, I you know he has to get the credit uh you know there were a lot of mistakes made on the quarterback side in terms of what to do and when to do it and how to do it with Tommy Reese but since then uh it's a tough team to watch at times but uh, tell me they're not one of the best teams in the country and I'm not talking about the two or three best but sure. it, it, group uh, the next group that that's snapping and uh, and one thing that I, I'll offer I think uh, had they not had Tommy Reese not been so stubborn about trying to get his guy in, uh, they could have said, they could have given Jalen Milrow confidence earlier, and I think they probably would have beaten Texas. Yeah, it's a it's a great point because look, everybody knows, in in you know the portal games, if you bring in the offensive coordinator from Notre Dame and he had a guy that he thought was successful, Tyler Buckner with him at Notre Dame, then you're going to give that a shot to see if you can give your team a juice shot in the arm, but neither here nor there that's not going to happen and Buckner's probably never going to see the field again at Alabama but he, you said something interesting that I wholeheartedly agree with you uh, Nick Saban and and I hang out with a, a coach who I believe is still in his prime and Dan Mullen who I believe is going to coach again because I think he's that good of a coach and I spend more time with him during the football season than I do my own wife so I'm really starting to get intimate knowledge of how these 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 men work and how their minds work and I, I've never thought this until I saw it yesterday. I heard Saban at his post game press conference, and you saying it there. I firmly believe the sickness that is how these head coaches are wired. That Nick Saban loves the challenge of this football team. Well, why is that, Matt? Because years past, Paul, they roll out a top ten quarterback, five top ten receivers throw the ball down the field and beat the hell out of every team 42 to 10. This year, Nick Saban has had to coach more in game potentially 
than he has in the past five or six years because you just watch the cutaways on the sidelines. And there's something about it that I think this team is reinvigorating him because he's having to find a new way to coach. Well, Matt, I heard in the offseason that they had too much talent last year before anybody goes crazy. I mean, they, they had the best offensive and defensive player, and sometimes the rest of the players – adapt and maybe uh, don't mature or or go to the to the nth degree uh but you know not only uh, has he had the four quarterbacks that we talk about all the time and the two that will be featured to in the Sunday night game but he had two Heisman trophy winners at running back in Ingram and 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 obviously Henry uh you know the receivers and you know, he's his best receiver is a guy that left Georgia two years ago uh and so they've had to make do that they don't have that that uh all pro wide receiver like they used to and and, and i i think deep down I, I, you have to get bored when you're at that level and the pressure is is not uh the pressure you put is is that, that what you put on yourself and you're fighting your own legacy uh and you know this season still has some turns but it, it it's been a remarkable thing to to overcome because I mean, we, the Alabama has been on at the precipice now against Ole Miss, against Texas A and M, against Tennessee, uh, and Arkansas. really, uh, you know, the, the biggest game of the season was a, it, it has yet to be played yet, and that's the next one against LSU. Right, and they had to fight to get a win against a bad Arkansas team. And yeah. look, look, hey, bad doesn't describe Arkansas. No, it doesn't. I want to segue to them in a minute, <laughs> but. Uh, Look, what does any coach tell you? Well, we got to learn how to win. You can't say anything but that for Alabama. We know they've got LSU in two weeks. That's going to be the game of the year in the SEC. And LSU is not going to have any problems scoring points. It's whether or not they can play defense. So we've got plenty of time to preview that one. But again, all Alabama is doing this year, we were sitting in studio and I looked at, at uh, Joey and Mullen. I'm like, does anyone not believe Alabama is not coming back and winning this game? And we just kind of sat there and laughed because he knew it was inevitable. Give me something I can't feel. Glad to see 